Hey everyone, this is Julie and welcome to another SoFab manga review. Mm -hmm. And today we're reviewing the manga I Hear the Sunspot. Mm -hmm. Joining me is none other than Rascal Entertainment. Hello there. <laughs> Yet again. So we're talking about I Hear the Sunspot. Right now it has six volumes. It's still currently running. It's been running since December 22nd of 2013. And it is being serialized in the semi-monthly Boys Love Manga Anthology. But, before we start, be sure to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get into some soap opera reviews, mashups, hacks, tips, and more. <laughs> yes. And thank you for joining me. I actually found this in the library, mm -hmm. and I had no idea what it was. I saw the cover, and a lot of times I'll go and just grab things to see what it's like. Mm -hmm. And... I grabbed the first volume, and after I read it, I thought it was a really nice manga. Mm -hmm. And I said, you should give it a try and see what you think. Right. And it's a pretty interesting story. Now, this is one is really is slice of life. Mm -hmm. I don't think you get any more slice of life than this. There's no shoujo elements, no comedy elements, no supernatural, magic, hero, nothing. It really is very grounded reality and the way it's written it almost feels like this has happened to somebody the author is female maybe perhaps she knew someone like this or she was inspired but i will say the biggest pro of it is that it feels like a real event not like you're reading just a story right now arthur is yuki fumino and it is in the demographic of josie so the plot itself is college student Taichi Sagawa learns that his lonely classmate Kohei Sugihara is deaf and he enrolls in a part-time job to take notes for him in exchange for food. And right. there are some hilarious parts that go with that. Now, as the two become more acquainted with each other, they develop a strong friendship that eventually turns into love further down in the volumes. Right. So, so far, read the first two volumes. Right. And as I said, the first volume was so nice that I went and got the second volume. I don't know if there's more available. I haven't checked yet. But out of the two that I've read so far, it's really nice. Yeah. I like that it's a slice of life because it's like those type of mangas and animes. Mm -hmm. But also I like that it feels, as you said, it, it flows. And it feels natural. It doesn't feel forced. It doesn't feel like... They're trying to make something more work that isn't working or write a story mm -hmm. for the heck of it. It does seem like it's someone's actual experience. Mm -hmm. The characters are likable. Um, especially <laughs> Taichi Sagawa. Yeah, because he eats, everybody feeds him. Right. So and clearly he, he doesn't have enough funds in college to eat. So people are always feeding him <laughs> and laughing at him and saying, hey, uh, they want to get him to do something and just offer him food. Right. And it's funny because he pretty much will do anything anyone needs to have done, any work, carrying things, attending meetings, whatever, as long as they give him food. Right. And he seems to really enjoy eating. Mm -hmm. And I think that was part of the reason why Kohei really liked him more because after they made the arrangements of him taking those which he doesn't do well for the food he really was enjoying his food and then we learned that Kohei actually cooks with his mom who is an instructor mm -hmm. um, yeah she's a chef mm -hmm. who gives instruction on how to make foods in your personal life mm -hmm. and he helps her to run the courses and he's been using Taichi kind of as a springboard to see what dishes work and don't work. Right. And you will see that it kind of has some similar elements of the movie A Silent Voice, mm -hmm. if you've seen or read that. And while it doesn't involve one guy bullying the other in here, um, there is a sort of element in there where the other kids who don't know he's deaf, think he's being arrogant or standoffish or thinking he's better than everyone. Or some believe he's faking death just so he doesn't talk to anybody. And it shows like a different side of how they portray 
deaf characters because usually we see in media they're practically very happy-go-lucky even if they can't speak or hear they're just kind of like uh, there's no problem with literally anything ever that they do but in here they show it's not like that really in the slightest they he manages to get things done he can still work uh, he can cook, he can function. And the girls like him because so. he's the tall, blonde, attractive one. Right. You have to mention that, and that is a part of what results in the bullying because the guys are jealous of the attention right. he gets. So they also establish that there are other deaf uh, people and characters in this story and how they try to help them get around and learn and educate, have places for them, and they bring up an interesting part in there where well how do you have this for that how do you have this for ones who are in wheelchairs ones who are blind thing they said well they can't accommodate everything at once because if they do one thing it looks like they're not focusing on another and one can get away with the other so they're constantly learning and adapting so that way they get to a point where everyone can get the help they need in one place and i think that was actually a much more refreshing way of handling that type of uh, representation and of people who are around these types of characters and how they adjust to it. Mm -hmm. Also want to mention that there ends up being for a short period of time what looks like maybe a love triangle because there's a girl that uh, Kohei is friends with but she wants to be more than friends not knowing Yeah, and it's... she literally starts treating, treating Taichi horribly like she hates him doesn't want him around yeah. tries to make him go away lies to him and it's like oh it's just like any other anime right. but this happens so we right. won't tell you the conclusion so that it can be a surprise you might be able to kind of figure it out anyway. right because in the type of book it is <laughs> yeah so this manga actually has a live action film adaptation mm. that was based only on the first volume that and released in June of 2017. And neither character looks like the the counter, book counterparts at all. I mean, you can't tell the difference. And you've been seeing it come up. Yeah, they look exactly the same in the book. Kohei is tall and blonde, and Taichi is short, quite a bit shorter and dark hair. And Taichi is very expressive, very emotional, very sensitive in the sense that he cares for other people. Mm -hmm. He will go out of his way to be kind, to help others. And Kohei is a little reserved because of being deaf right. and not knowing how to interact with others. Right. Now, for the movie itself, you have um, Kohei portrayed by Hidea Tawada and Taichi is portrayed by Akira Onodera. Mm -hmm. We learned shortly ago that Haida Tawada is a Japanese actor who played the role of Kenji mm -hmm. Takagawa in the 2015 Super Sentai TV series Shuriken, Shuriken Sentai Neninger. Playmaker will know this. Mm -hmm. And what I think is funny is I actually had stated one time reading the first manga that the two characters kind of looked similar. Just one had black hair, one had white blonde type hair. And then you get to live action and I guess someone else knows that too and decided well let's just make them look like t practically twins. <laughs> let's just cast them and it's like you know if you don't read the manga you're kind of lost because you really don't know who's who unless you see the characteristics right. like in their personality or their mannerisms and stuff if you have to not recall their names then that's probably the only way you know the difference between them and it's almost funny in its own way so i definitely recommend that you try reading this book if you like books that are slice of life kind of just giving you an idea of how others spend their days and times if you like just seeing relationship building mm -hmm. and calmer stories then definitely i hear the sunspot is something i recommend that you read and i think the right now out of the ones we've read the first one i think was 
more interesting than the second one because as you said the first one didn't feel like they were trying to force something that wasn't there the second one was beginning to lean a little bit towards it because they started to add a little drama in there like not just regular shipping drama like you expect like they're trying to make it look like it was like way more than it was like it wasn't forbidden or anything it just was it seemed like they were trying to make a lot more drama out of it and emotions and it's like well they kind of did better with it just being a simple slow burn build up to the relationship rather than try to throw a wedge in and it really wasn't necessary just seeing how they interact and how they are with each other was good enough to be engaging to read well you can say this was kind of groundbreaker for these type of books because i've actually read another series that stars a girl who's deaf and we see these characters come up frequently now but this manga originally premiered back in 2013 this was not a common subject that came up right so quickly it says that rebecca Silverman from anime news network reviewed i hear the sunspot favorably praising this exploration of school stereotypes and kohei and taichi's relationship regarding theory of happiness she described it as being sweet and thoughtful and i agree mm -hmm. and praised the art but she also stated that it had a excessive angst um, i guess in a way right with the bullying with taichi yeah. i would say and Corrine Barrett Percy described Kohei as an example of how people with disabilities and queer identities are seen as outsiders in Japanese society. This being 2023, I do hope this has changed by now. Mm -hmm. But when this came out, it was groundbreaking. If you've read I Hear the Sunspot manga, let us know what you think in the comments below. Did you love it? Did you think it was meh? We'd really like to hear what you think. And if you haven't, it's available on Amazon. I think it runs $13 a volume mm -hmm. or try your local library and give it a read and come back and tell us what you think right and be sure to like subscribe and click the bell dates on sofa reviews tips hacks boosts and more absolutely I hope you continue to have a fantastic day and thank you so much for your support and joining us on these manga reviews if you have any recommendations give them to us in the comments below as well yeah so thank you so much for watching I'm Rascal Entertainment. And I'm Julie. Have a fantastic day. Continue to be happy, healthy, and whole. See you next time. Why is it sound like Taichi's voice?